Hello everybody. This is my um, equation to determine if a number is prime. I've modified the equation to actually tell you a little bit more. It, it actually tells you if a number is prime and if it's not prime, it tells you how many factors that number has. Um, let me get started. I'm just going to show you how I came up uh, with this equation, how it works, and how, could, uh, how you can use it. First of all, this is the equation. f of x equals the sum of this cosine and it's and when this equ when this sum is equal to two that means the number is prime so if i put one two three a thousand a million a zil a gazillion plus one if 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 once i plug in any number to this equation if its result is two it's a prime number guaranteed okay this is how we arrived at the, uh, the equation so let's get started First of all, let me tell you what a prime number is. I'm pretty sure if you're here uh, looking at this, you already know. A prime number is an integer that is divisible by one and itself only. Um, and by definition, one itself is not a prime, even though one is divided by one in itself, which is one. But like two, two is divisible by two in itself. Three, three is divisible by three in itself. Four, it's not a prime because four uh, is divisible by four, by one, but it's also divisible by two. So it's not a prime. Now, the, the way I wanted to start this was I wanted to keep track of a number and its multiples. How do I come up with the, an equation that keeps track of a number and its multiples? I decided to use um, a cosine wave. A sine wave or a cosine wave has, an, has a nice little property in that it, it repeats itself at any given interval uh, without just keeps on repeating itself. So I could use it to, to determine uh, a number and its uh, multiples. If you look at just a regular cosine t times pi, this function will give you a negative one or a one at every integer interval. So if, if I put a cosine t1, I'll get a negative one. If I put two, I'll get a positive one. If I put three, I will get a um, negative one again. If I put four, a positive one. So this function already is telling me something. If I put in an integer, I get a minus one or a one. If I put in a, an, a non-integer, one and a half or whatever, I will get a number between one and negative one. So right away that this function is telling me something. I could use it to determine if a number is basically an integer. I don't want to deal with negative numbers. I mean, I don't want a function that says, you know, if a number is negative one or one, it means it's an integer. I want it to tell me if it's one, it's, it's an integer. If it's two, it's an integer. If it's a multiple two, you know, uh, I mean, if it's one, give me a one, otherwise give me a zero and so forth. If it's two and or it's multiple, give me a one, otherwise give me a zero or whatever other value. How do I do this? There's a lot of way I could do this, but I'm going with squaring the function. I'm doing this specifically for a reason that I'm gonna use later on. Now, if you square the cosine function, now you, you're gonna get either a positive one for the integer interval or a number less than one for any non-integer. So if, if I put a, a one for t, I get a, a, a one here. If I put two, one. If I put three, one, four, one, five, one, et cetera, et cetera. If I put one and a half, it's gonna go, you know, somewhere around here or around here, whatever. It's not gonna give me a one. So, that, so this function, it's gonna give me a one for integer and non one for non-integers. How could I use this? I could use this to generate a function that'll give me a one for any given number in its multiples. Like if I want a, uh, a function that'll give me a one for two in its multiples, I just divide pi by two, and whenever I enter a number, if I enter two, I will get a one. If I enter the next multiple two, which is four, I get a one, six, I get a one. But if I enter anything um, in between, two and a multiple of two if i enter like a one i would actually get a zero 
if I enter a 2.25, I will get something around here, something between 1 and a 0. If I enter 3, I get a 0. So right away, this function is give, it's giving me a 1 for every multiple 2, a 0 otherwise. In general, I could adjust this function to give me a 1 for any interval at all. I just divide by n, n being the interval I want. For example, in this function, cosine divided by 3 t cosine divided by pi, t pi cosine divided by 3 squared, it gives me a 1 for, for 3 in all its multiples. So if I put 3, 1, 6, 1, 9, 1, these are all the multiples of 3. Otherwise, it gives me a number between 1 and 0. By definition, we're not considering 0, so we don't care what it says at 0. Now, this is a nice function. It's a great function. I could start using it for what I want to do, which is keep track of an, a number and all its multiples. I'm going to use this later on to determine which numbers are prime. However, I want a nice, neat function. I want a function that'll not give me a whole bunch of diff different range of numbers. I want a function that either tells me one when it's a multiple of a number I want, or zero if it's not a multiple. I don't want anything in between. Now, this is what this is the nice little thing about raising cosine to higher degrees. Let's take cosine. And instead of squaring it, let's raise it to a power of 6. When you raise it to a power of 6, um, you still get 1 um, at the desired intervals, which is 3, 6, 9, 12, etc. But these numbers here are, getting, uh, ha are becoming closer to 0. See, if before it only gave you 0 at one point. Now it's giving you 0 at this whole range. In fact, the higher the power, the higher the power, I'm, I'm raising it to 200 right now, the, m the more closer it'll get to my ideal function. My ideal function is 1 for a multiple of, of the value I want, 0 for anything else. So in fact, if I raise this ideally to an even infinite number, this will give me uh, definitely 1 for the multiple, 0 for anything else. 900 is not infinite, but let's call it close enough. If you look at this function, you're just getting a straight little line at 3 and its multiples, 3, 6, 9, 12, etc., and 0 everywhere, every, everywhere else. So taking the cosine function, raising it to infinity, will pretty much generate a function that will give me 1 for any multiple of a number I give it, 0 for anything else. So right now, I've generated a function to test for any multiple of any given uh, number I want, which is a very good thing uh, because it's something that I'm going to use to determine prime numbers later on. Okay, I've explained this. So, so I've created a function that gives me 1 for the multiple of n, 0 any, anywhere else. But what happens if I start combining several of these functions together? Um, it'll, give, it'll do something nice. Sorry for not spelling this correctly. Let's spell it right now. <laughs> Let's spell it right now. For example, if I have a, a function that gives me 1 for every interval of 2, and three, and one for every interval of three, the function will the function will have a nice property that if I enter uh, two, it'll give me one. If I enter three, it'll give me one. But if I uh, but but if I uh, enter any number which is a com is a multiple of two and three, it will actually return to me the number two. Um, this is a good thing because it'll allow me to test which numbers are prime and which numbers are uh, a combination and composite of other two numbers. So let me show you. So uh, this is my function, cosine uh, 
x pi divided by two. This will will generate um, a function which will give me a one at every interval two. This will generate a function which will give me a one at every interval of three. Adding these two numbers up, when I put in two, I get one. When I put in three, I get one. When I put in any number that is a combination of two and three, like six, which is two times three, I will actually get two. Uh, when I put 12, which is two times three times two, I will get to 18 and so on and so forth. So right now I'm getting one, but two and three, which are prime numbers. And, it, and all the numbers which are a combination of these two numbers, that is, these two numbers are factors of this number, pretty much are giving me something other than one. If I keep on adding more factors, if I keep on adding more, 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 uh, uh, more things to the equation, I have uh, all the multiples of two added, all the multiples of three, four, and five, it has the same effect, basically. For if I put in a two, it'll give me a one. If I put in a three, it'll give me a one. If I put in a five, it will give me a one. All of these are prime number, prime numbers. But if I put in a four, it'll give me a two because two is, is it's not is actually a, comp a composite of uh, uh, two times two. Um, so it'll so it'll give me this thing. Uh, Another way of looking at it is not really that it's a composite, but it how many factors it has. Uh, f the factors of four are one, two, and four. But since n in nowhere in my equation I'm considering one, it's just telling me that the factor of four is two and four, so it's telling me that four has two factors. It actually has three, but I'm not considering one in this equation yet. So as I get closer and closer to infinity, it'll, I'll be able to test it for any number. So if I put in two, I get a one, three, I get a one, four, not a one, which is not a prime, five, one, which is a prime, six, uh, not a one, because it's not a prime, it's actually telling me it has three factors. Um, it actually has f four factors, which is one, two, three, and six, but since the one is not considered in this equation, it's giving me three, because he's saying that the factors is two, three, and six. Again, as I go out to infinity, I'll be able to test out any number I, li I like. So if I put in two, I get one, which is a prime. I put in three, one, which is a prime. Four, not a prime, so I get something bigger than one. Five is a prime. Six, not a prime. Seven is a prime. Eight, not a prime. Nine, not a prime. 10 not a prime, 11 gives me a one, so it's a prime. So pretty much this function, as I go, on to, uh, go out to infinity, uh, will tell me, will return one if, if, uh, if a number is prime, something greater than one if a number is not prime because of uh, constructive interference, basically. You know, you add up um, two and four, and it'll tell you that. This is great, but it's not perfect. Um, I would like for it to tell me if a number is prime or if it's not prime to actually tell me how many factors it has. I could achieve this simply by adding a cosine of interval one. I've added of two, three, four, blah, 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 up to infinity, I forgot about one. By adding one to it, now if I look at four, it's telling me, if, if, uh, giving me, returning uh, three for four, which is great because that's how many factors four has, which is one, two, and four. Six is giving me four, which is great because that's how many factors six has, which is one, two, three, and six, four numbers, and so on and so forth. However, n n it no longer returns one for prime numbers, now it returns two for prime numbers, why? because it's telling you how many factors it has. Uh, for two, it's saying that the, uh, the factors of two is two and one, basically itself and one. Three has a factor of one and three, which is itself and one. Five has a factor of one and five, 
which is itself a one, which is our definition of prime anyway. A, a prime number is a number that is divided by itself and one. So whenever this new function, which I adjust, it returns two, it means that the number is prime. Whenever it returns anything other th than two, the number that it gives you is telling you how many factors it has because of the uh, the uh, contrast constructive interference, basically. When the the, num the factors um, all pass by this point, they will add up with each other. So that's it. That's how I, I get the function. So this function will basically always return two for prime numbers. And if it doesn't return two, the number that it returns is actually the number of factors of that number. Now, now um, because um, the way the function works, you don't actually have to add to infinity. You could just add up to x. This will help reduce things a little bit and speed up your your calculations. We do infinite functions all the time. Uh, cosine is supposed to be an infinite function, but when you start to approximate, um, approximating, uh, changing infinity to x will also give you the same value, only because um, when n becomes greater than x, uh, x over n becomes less than 1, and any uh, anything between 0 and pi will give you a number less than 1. So when this fracture becomes less than 1, this whole thing becomes less than pi. So the cosine of it will become a number less than 1, and this will, 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 uh, will make sure that this becomes 0. So, any, so even though this is the precise formula, this formula is also precise because any number above uh, uh, any n greater than x will basically return a zero all the time. So it's, it's no need to add. So basically any of these functions will, will give you the right answer. Um, if you add from n to x these values, if it gives you two, it's a prime number. If it gives you anything other than two, then it's the number of uh, f factors that it has. Um, infinity is the same thing because once uh, n becomes greater than x, this will always be zero. So basically anything afterwards is just a bunch of zero and it doesn't matter. This also doesn't have to be infinity. Uh, it could be any large number because the function shrinks down to zero very quickly. So a, a large number will do. I've been testing this out. I wrote up uh, a simple program in Pascal, not more, not very efficient. And, and I started out from one and above. And I can't complain about the speed. I've actually tested it for numbers much bigger than this. And it, and it, uh, it tests number at a nice constant rate. Now I've actually checked every number on the internet. I don't need to because the the logic is solid. But I tested. I've checked every number out in the internet. Uh, take a look at the numbers that are popping out. Go on the internet and check them out. If you want, I'll put the code later on that I use. It's, it's a code that is implementing this function. It tells you every prime number without missing any single one. It's a hundred percent accurate, and the speed is not that bad. Um, you don't have to do a whole bunch of division. You just add a whole bunch of cosines, which uh, may sound bad, but it's not that bad, uh, given that you have uh, a lot of computers that could do things in parallel. Um, you could actually speed this up quite nicely. So this function uh, could be used in a very nice, nice way in parallel systems to to test huge number very huge numbers very quickly. So anyway, here you have it. These two functions, which are pretty much the same function, given that I told you that anything when n is greater than x, it always returns zero. These two functions will tell you if a number is prime or not. Go ahead, test it out, 
run it, uh, write a program, test it out in your calculator, do anything you want. If you find any point where this uh, function fails, let me know. Uh, the logic is solid, it will not fail. Um, and um, that's it. A, f a nice little equation to test if a if any given number is prime or not. Thank you. And I really hope that you guys ask questions or test it out or let me know if you found any problems with it.